Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples. I wanna talk a little bit about what kills us in relation to COVID. COVID was something that I don't think anyone really quite saw on the horizon, but it's had a truly uh, historic impact on uh, not only the United States, but the human species as a whole. First things I wanna do is think about what kills us before COVID. Um, now, if we had had this class um, in the um, spring of 2020, and we had done this lecture in say early March, um, I would have told you that this is the list of things that generally kill Americans. I wanna talk about though, there's a singular cause that impacts a big chunk of these. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, the things that kill people in the United States uh, start with heart disease, cancer, and chronic lower respiratory diseases. Those are the three things that kill people the most in the United States. Things like accidents and unintentional injuries, um, that's always something that's been up there. Stroke and cerebral vascular diseases, that's hard to say. Um, Alzheimer's, diabetes, influenza, nephritis, which is kidneys, uh, and suicide are the things that round out our top 10. But look through that list. Do you maybe see how there might be a singular cause that overlaps with all of those? Do you see it? It's there. How many of these link back to smoking cigarettes? Heart disease, well, cigarettes harden arteries and cause all sorts of issues. It can speed up your pulse a little bit, as I understand it, too. Cancer, that's kind of an easy one. Lung cancer, but also anytime we in induce an inca a carcinogenic substance into our body, it creates unpredictable things like cancers. Um, chronic lower respiratory diseases, respiratory has everything to do with our lungs, which has everything to do with cigarettes. Accidents and unintentional injuries, probably not. Stroke and cerebrovascular diseases. Well, strokes go back to the uh, whole uh, cardiovascular system, and the cardiovascular system is impacted by smoking, so we could see a higher risk there. I'm not sure about Alzheimer's disease and a link to tobacco, but with things like influenza and pneumonia, uh, your immunity can be weakened through cigarettes, and also it can weaken your lungs, which you can invite influenza and pneumonia uh, being fatal rather than something that's treatable. Nephritis, this one um, is a maybe because again, our, our kidneys are part of our filtration system and they have to work with um, the uh, issues with, um, you know, introducing smoke into our bodies. But on the flip side of that too, uh, our kidneys sometimes will work harder when the rest of our system isn't working properly as will our lungs. Um, and so that could also put stress on them as well. Um, so these are all things that are linking back to smoking in some ways. Um, the majority of things um, on the things that were killing us had ties to smoking. And then COVID came. Uh, COVID has impacted all sorts of things. We're predicting that it's going to radically change uh, influenza infection rates because in many places people are still social distancing and wearing masks, which um, in the Southern Hemisphere, which has the flu season when we're having our spring and summer, um, it largely eradicated the flu in some places. Like a flu season just didn't happen in a lot of places in like New Zealand and Australia. Um, so we'll see what it does here. We may see going into that, um, as this is fall 2020, uh, that it may, may impact our flu season in the United States. Nonetheless, based on the data that we have, uh, COVID um, is estimated at the end of the year to probably be the number three cause of death in the United States. Um, as of this, the best data that we had, I think we were around 125,000 had died. Some people predict it's higher. Some people argue that that data is flawed. I leave that for another conversation, but we do, as best we can tell, predict that COVID's probably gonna be our number three killer for the year. This is not our first um, um, rodeo with pep epidemics. In fact, we've been dealing with these for a long time. Our earliest epidemic um, probably on record would be Greece's Plague of Athens. Uh, that was around 420 BC, and that killed around 100,000 people guesstimated. So this is slightly bigger than that potentially now. Um, but then you got smallpox. And smallpox in the Roman Empire killed five to 10 million people. Five to 10 million people, that's a lot of people. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what our world uh, death rate is. I think it was, um, well, I, I don't wanna guess, but it's out there if you'd like to look it up. Um, and this was just over a few decades of experiencing smallpox. Um, and that was around 165 AD, that's a lot of people. Um, likewise too, we see with uh, some plagues in Europe, the um, Justinian plague, which was caused by um, the uh, bacterium Yersinia pestis. Does anybody have a guess what Yersinia pestis is? That would in fact be the flea bacteria that causes the Black Death. That killed 25 to 50 million people, which was 40% of the world's population in two years. 
um, for the Justinian plagues. And likewise, we saw that to come back a couple of times, 1331 to 1353-ish. We saw the Black Death, as it was called then, uh, killed as many as 200 million people in Europe. Nothing nearly on um, path with what we are dealing with right now. Um, and it would continue to pop up many times because it took a while for us to understand that um, rats and fleas and human bites were all kind of interlinked in this thing killing us. The American colonies experienced a lot of epidemics. Um, there's some really um, horrible stories. In fact, if you go through U.S. history in terms of looking at uh, the colonial military and the early colonies, I mean, people would move into swamps because they didn't understand malaria and they would be wiped out. Um, likewise, things like measles, smallpox, and influenza would routinely go through um, colonial areas, through uh, military battalions, because they just didn't understand how it was being spread and it would kill people. Not to mention what it did to uh, indigenous people in the United States who were exposed to these disease for the first time, and many of them had zero immunity, and so it eradicated um, a wide swath of people who were indigenous, which was a tragic thing. Um, that is often overlooked in American history, and I think that's something that we should think more about, uh, indigenous rights. Nonetheless, uh, more recently, we had Ebola, influenza still an issue. Remember Zika in your lifetime, as Ebola was also in your lifetime. These are all things that have popped up occasionally um, and killed tens of thousands of people across the planet, but haven't really had nearly the risk of what we're dealing with now. By the way, if you want to see the full list of epidemics, I put a link in there about Wikipedia's list, and I think Wikipedia's awesome. You should make a donation to them if you can afford it. Now, with COVID, it's kind of the newest thing in my 40-something years of living um, that we've had anything like this. We've had a couple of experiences. There were concerns over the Zika virus, over Ebola. Um, I believe that we had a similar thing with um, SARS when I was in my early 20s, but none of them were anything remotely similar to this. Um, this was a highly infectious disease that we were dealing with with COVID, and we still are trying to understand what it is and where it came from. Um, some of the best guess, uh, guesses are that it appeared, um, this was as of September 20, 2020, by the way, some of the best guesses that we have on the data were that COVID appeared in Wuhan, China in 2019, perhaps late in the year. We're still trying to pinpoint that. Um, it is part of a family that we've seen and known about for a very long time. Um, it's part of a family of viruses that includes colds, SARS, and MERS. The latter two were uh, minor epidemics in recent years. Um, and the big thing about this is these infect mammals and birds. So it's very possible for them to cross um, uh, over into different mammals and into different avian species. So that can be a thing. Um, in fact, we're seeing uh, mink populations at mink farms being impacted by um, uh, COVID. We're seeing uh, issues with dogs catching it. Uh, just all sorts of random things that are kind of unexpected. Um, so it is something that's that's happening. Now, this particular family of viruses first popped up in the 1960s. It was probably there before, but that's when we discovered it um, as being a thing. And it started with a bronchitis uh, infection in a chicken farm. And that continues to go back to one of the traits uh, that really seems to define this field is that it goes after the lungs in very different, very scary ways. Um, and once it gets in there, if the lungs don't function, then people are dying. It's very frightening. Um, the corona name actually comes from the appearance of the virus. If you look at the pictures of it, which I'm sure you have seen at this point, um, they kind of look like a crown, and corona means crown in Latin, and it really describes what the, the virus kind of looks like. Um, we're still figuring out how this all works, and I'm not a doctor, um, but as best as I understand it, reading experts, um, this is a virus that invades our body using a spike protein uh, that attaches to some of our cells. And then from there, it's really cool that it enters the cell and it replicates itself. Um, that actually sounds very similar in some ways to HIV, which we'll talk about later in this lecture series. Coronavirus has been an extraordinary change in um, how our society functions. It's interesting, too, that the discussion of masks has also been something that's become a very socialized thing. In fact, we have seen um, people take very different stances on mask use based on um, their political beliefs, their religious beliefs, uh, their cultural beliefs, and so forth. It's been really, really interesting to see those things um, play out. So COVID has given us a very interesting sociological experience. It's interesting too because there's some ongoing un 
unclearness in terms of how age impacts um, this virus. You know, the best early data that we have at this point, and again, this is only October 2020, um, is that the um, age populations that are tend to be older are getting impacted more. Um, but we don't exactly understand why. There was an original belief that maybe only the older populations were catching it, but then we started finding out that tons of kids were testing positive and that they uh, were spreaders, but not necessarily showing any symptoms. Um, and that seems to be that the death rates have been heavily skewed towards an older population. Um, and as basically as you increase in age, um, that you're at a higher risk. Beyond age, we're still trying to decide what some of the higher risk categories have been because they've suggested some and then gone back and said, well, this study didn't find that, but this one did. And this is normal. This is science. Science requires um, a period of debate. And so it's going to be a while before we fully understand this. We will eventually, uh, but it's going to take a while. Um, it is interesting that people link back to the 1918 and 1919 H1N1 flu. Um, there was a long-standing myth that the H1N1 flu um, targeted only young people uh, because that's where we saw the deaths most notably. But that actually was an interesting um, result of that period of time and what was happening because what was going on in 1918 and 1919? oh, that's right, we had a world war going on. And what would young persons have been doing at the time? Well, a whole bunch of them were signed up in the military. In male or female, a lot of people were working in support aspects of the military. As such, those military camps were rife for having an epidemic come in. And as many times we've seen in the past, military forces just getting destroyed by a virus. And that's actually what happened. The H1N1 got in there and people were dying very rapidly. Um, they weren't necessarily getting rapid care but they were just they'd get sick they would die and that was just it um really what we found that this was maybe different from what's going on with coronavirus because it was just a coincidence that a lot of these troops in the world war one period were getting exposed to h1n1 and dying because they were in very close confines and they didn't really necessarily think about things like washing hands or wearing masks or whatever they might have done to limit that um but now with covid it does seem to be different we do seem that there appears to be uh data impacting um shaping the idea that people who are older are just at a higher risk. We don't know what this all means yet. This is still so early, early, and I, I can't uh, stress that enough that we're still trying to understand um, how things are going with COVID and what this means for the future. But I did want to record this, document this, and share as much as I can. Um, what I do encourage you to do, those of you who are college students on campus, make sure to follow EKU's COVID policy that you're experiencing that and uh, follow their policies on campus. Um, and, uh, you know, follow your heart and do what's right to protect yourself as you think you need to. Um, I'm not here to tell you how to do that. You have to figure that out on your own. Nonetheless, I did want to at least summarize what data that we had about COVID thus far. If you have questions about it, you're always welcome to write me. I may or may not be able to answer your question, but I can try and find an answer to it. And frankly, if you have a question, I might have the same question and need to look it up anyways. Um, but that'll wrap us up for here, our mini lecture on COVID. In our next lecture, we're going to start talking about something we call culture-bound syndromes. And this is where we see how, strangely enough, certain cultures will experience a particular disease while others don't. We need to make sense of that. Two, this will also give us a chance to start thinking about how something like HIV has impacted our uh, nation and, well, entire human species uh, in the coming lectures as well. So if you have questions, you know where to find me. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture. Take care.